ነው የሚመጣ አውቀ ነበር እንደዚህ ተሁሉ ይመጣል በዬ ግን ሴትነቴን ለማረጋግጥ ይሄን ማድረግ አለብኝ ሰባሪ ምላጭ Well, Pretoria born producer, director and writer Litabo Mukhatle's film called Sibari Milach which means break the blade in Amharic has been doing very well in the cinematic landscape locally and abroad. This thesis film touches on the sensitive topic of female circumcision and it's a true story that the main actress who plays the role of Afia experienced at the age of 4 years old in Ethiopia. Litabo Mukhatle joins us now via Zoom to tell us more about his exciting project. Very good morning to you Litabo. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning. Thank you so much for having me. This is a very important film bordering on a very very important subject that of uh, female circumcision and you know there's also you know uh, issues of uh, FGM or female genital mutilation that also come into this conversation first of all tell us what inspired you to write this film That's a very very good question um the inspiration came from 10 years ago when I met a young woman who her mom went through circumcision and i remember her telling me all the traumatic things that took place that her mom went through and as a young filmmaker at the time i wanted to talk about this type of topic mm. but i didn't know how to go about it and at the time a lot of people were making documentaries but they were not really being very well known or you know basically having this type of topic um talked about as a huge sensitive topic so i think you know from 3 years ago i sat down and i thankfully met with amazing people that helped me put this together mm. let's talk about your vision for this film and how you sort of managed to tell this story with so much care and truth without being overly invasive to the subject of course oh yes yes Um initially the story was going to be a psychological horror mm-hmm. um showing how mutilation plays a role on these women because not only is it as a done as a ritual practice but it also has a huge spiritual background to it and obviously doing this film in a different country and in a different setting it was not that easy um especially when it came to having the vision told as building you know a set that would resemble a small ethiopian village and having the cast that would also help me not to appropriate the culture but to help me put the best foot forward on telling the story and being true to the culture as well and in in terms of putting your best foot forward in telling the story uh, in what i mean Are you telling the story in the sense that you are highlighting the pitfalls of female circumcision uh, and I would imagine there will be certain cultures that will be frowning on that because of the various cultural nuances. Yes, yes, that was definitely something I had to sit down and obviously brainstorm because having a topic like this is very culturally sensitive mm-hmm. and that has been practiced for so many generations. So I think when i had to put the story together not only is it a call to action but it is also shining light on what has been practiced for many of generations and to try and help these young women mm. that come from different third world countries with not the proper care because this is done you know um not surgically and i know in different countries they have the surgical practice to do it on these young women let's talk about the cast featured and what it took to put it all together Oh. It was so hard. Um so this film Sibarmi Lach was filmed in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And obviously having a cast that is Ethiopian was not that hard, um was not that easy to find. So I teamed up with a Habitian casting director who helped me outsource the cast because as I mentioned before I wanted to stick true to the culture, stick true to what uh the story is about and I didn't want it to be in English. 
and that is why it's an Amharic. So going about finding the crew and the cast in Los Angeles was very hard because this was during COVID times and there was a lot of COVID restrictions. Yeah. But I had to put on all cast calls on social media, talking to people that I knew that knew Habitian actors. And funny thing, having my main actress came in two weeks before the film as the main actress before had gotten COVID. And okay. we were also stressed out because we definitely wanted to go on with the story. And one of the girls that saw the script reached out to me and told me that she has to be part of this because she went through it personally. Wow. And so I think after finding out that she went through it personally, I then went back and changed the story to make it now be a story about what she went through and all right. the experiences that she has been through. Right. How much research uh, did it go? Uh, I mean, did, did it take for you to come up with this story? I mean, an advantage was the fact that the main actress was actually somebody who's went through the whole process personally. Oh, wow. It has taken me over the last three years and plus counting the 10 years of the, like, the woman I came across. Mm -hmm. So from that, I started doing my research because knowing that this was also not done in Africa, but it was also done within the Middle East in the Islam community. So I needed to find out what does every culture do? Mm -hmm. How do they, you know, mutilate these young women? What is the aftermath of, you know, that these women face? So it definitely took a lot of research and of course some criticism as well that went through it. And this film had its first live screening at the Oprah Winfrey sponsored Michaud Film Festival back in July. Tell us more about this experience. Yes, oh my word, it was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Firstly, to have an official selection in her festival. Um, I did not know this film would actually go far or reach a broader audience. And when I found my email, the email that they sent me, I was very happy. And I met with the festival director mm -hmm. and they told me how much this film educated them or opened them to something different culturally, especially coming from South Africa and having an African film that's not just artistically pleasing as some films, but also having a call to action, having a message behind it. And you've bagged a couple of awards for this film, one of them being Best Women's Rights Film. Jeez, that's, uh, that, that's quite something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it's incredible. I, like I said, I didn't think, you know, this film was going to go this far. Not only was it a passion film, it was a film I definitely wanted to tell. And I am surprisingly in Chicago, so my mm. film will be screened tomorrow at the festival where I will also be giving a live talk back at the festival. So it's yeah. a huge achievement. I am so blessed and I'm so thankful for this. And what is that one message that you hope viewers of this film will take away uh, with them after watching it? I hope that, you know, as I mentioned, this is a traditional controversial film mm, you know mm. it raises so many topics i've had so many questions where most people didn't know about this and some people knew but i have been told that you know it's something they don't really talk about so i think the take back i want people to see is seeing how women in you know different countries go through these are the untold stories i am passionate about sharing social unjust films so having a film like this, opening people to what mutilation is and helping, you know, to still spread the awareness on stopping FGM, because I know there is a movement out there for young women, and but it's not really known. So I think just having them see and relate to the main actress is something I definitely wish and hope that mm. the audience will take that in. Just before I let you go, we're out of time, unfortunately. So when are we likely to see it in South Africa? It will definitely be next year. Okay. We are planning a public screening with the Royal Buffalo Gang. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they are located in Rustenburg. So they are part of my family and they are trying to have a huge premiere there. Okay. All right. Great chatting to you, Litabo. Thank you so much for joining us. Eh? Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.
it's, an, it's a pleasure. Well, that's producer, director and writer Tabo Mokhatle and we've been talking about her multi-award winning film called Sibari Milech.